You have to look at everybody's window treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to cut. So, welcome everybody. <clears throat> welcome to our first legislative committee. If you are joining, we are doing webinar style. So you will be able to see the panel. And we will be able to see you as a participant. And you'll be able to, to put any questions or comments you have in the Q&A or the chat. We have Mr. Langstaff as an attendee. So welcome everybody to our first legislative committee meeting. Hope everybody's having a good start to their school year. We'll just wait for a little early, wait for our meeting to, our meeting attendees, registrants to get here. Kathy Romano is on. Hello, Mrs. Romano. So we are running this webinar style. Um, attendees can put your questions or your comments in the Q&A or the chat on the bottom of your screen. Hello. Hi, Senator, how are you? Incredible. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Ahead of time. So we're waiting for our our participants to jump in and then we'll get started. We're doing this webinar format. We are recording it. So it will be able to be viewed later. Um, but we're doing it webinar format. So there'll be a panel. People will be able to see Mr. Miller and the Senator and myself and Lori. And they'll be able to put their comments in a chat box. Um, <laughs> no. Let me just sneeze. Bless you if you just sneezed. <laughs> so what a year we've been having, Senator. You picked a picked a good year to retire. My God. There's nothing ever been like this. Never. Good time. When did you make a decision? When did you make the decision? Um, oh, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Before, before COVID, though, right? Uh, I think it was just, you know, it's a funny thing. You wake up one day and you say, you know, I think it's time. I've had a good ride and uh, I'd like to do other things. Hopefully, I'm going to go over to the university. Try and do some things over there, but uh, yeah. Sometimes you just know, right? You just know. I I think you, it you was do. I think you it do. was January when he said it out loud. January. <laughs> 
Okay, so a couple more minutes, because I know that Mr. Miller likes to be timely. He's all ready. He's ready to go. <laughs> so the nice thing about this Zoom is you can do it from wherever you're at. That's right. Yeah, makes for an easy commute. I think uh, a year and a half ago, I don't think I knew what Zoom was. <laughs> now, in the Senate, we, we do everything through Zoom. And so everything is, everything is from a distance? Everything's from a distance. Right. Yep. Wait a couple more minutes. I'll wait for your cue, Mr. Miller, as to when we okay. should. We've got 6.58 right now, so we'll give it two more minutes, 7 o'clock. Okay, it's seven o'clock. It looks like we have a great uh, attendance tonight. We got about 25 people. Um, I'd like to introduce myself, Bill Miller. I'm the chairperson of this legislative committee, also vice president of the uh, board. Uh, welcome everyone to our September 10, 2020, our first meeting of the new school year. Uh, we have a guest speaker tonight, Senator Kenneth Laval. And for everyone, again, I'm touting us as this is our start of our fifth year. We started this program in 2016 and we're faithfully gonna continue with it. And uh, this is 2020 going to be 2021. So it'll be an exciting year and we have exciting speakers all lined up. Uh, Dr. Lutz, what is the Pledge of Allegiance? Yep, so we are going to pledge the flag. Okay, ready? So. Our Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Beautiful. Great flag. All right, Dr. Let's um, turn it over to you for the introduction of our great speaker tonight. Yes, yeah, so we are so happy, as Mr. Miller said, this is the beginning of our fifth year of this legislative committee. I see some of the folks who are on are people who have been with us, I think, for all of those five years. So welcome back to the fifth year. Um, this is our first official virtual meeting. Um, but most importantly, we are really excited to have a special guest, uh, Senator Ken Laval. Um, Senator Laval has been a friend of BOCES for a long time, a friend to public education, certainly on the eastern end of Long Island for a long time, and a force to be reckoned with in Albany. But let me just tell you a little bit about him. Um, so he is um, actually, his office is in Port Jeff. He was first elected to the New York State Senate in 1976. He was appointed chairman of the Senate Committee on Higher Education in 1979 and has helped shape higher education policy in New York State 
for more than 30 years, where his work with education leaders at the State University of New York, uh, City University of New York, and independent colleges has earned him the respect of the academic community. All you have to do is go up to SUNY Stoiber and see uh, the impact that Senator Lavelle has had on, on that campus. Um, in 2007, the governor appointed uh, Senator Lavelle to the New York State Commission on Higher Education, which was changed, which excuse me, which was charged with identifying ways of improving the quality of higher education in the state. Um, Senator Lavelle also served on the National Council of State Legislature's Blue Ribbon Commission on Higher Education, whose goal was to create awareness among state legislators state legislatures of their role in providing accessible and affordable public higher education. Senator Lavelle's achievements in education and higher education are matched by a distinguished record in health care, and he is most proud of his work in establishing a burn unit at Stony Brook University Medical Center. His legislation to protect and advance the rights of patients earned him special recognition from the Suffolk County Breast Health Partnership St. Charles Hospice also paid tribute to his efforts in developing a program for terminally ill patients in nursing homes. His commitment to quality health care is continued in his efforts to create an East End Hospice Alliance, ensuring continued access to vital health services on Eastern Long Island. Uh, Senator Lavelle was instrumental in creating the Long Island High Technology Incubator at Stony Brook University and championed the Stony Brook University Incubator at Calverton. The Calverton Incubator was conceived as an economic engine to enhance Eastern Long Island's agricultural, aquacultural, and environmental industries. Throughout his tenure in the New York State Senate, real property tax relief has been an important priority for Senator Laval. He and I have had many conversations about property taxes and how extensive they are and what a challenge it is for both property owners and school administrators. Um, as a major architect in the development of the STAR program, he takes tremendous personal satisfaction and the benefits this initiative has brought to homeowners in the first senatorial district. Senator Laval has also been a formidable advocate for the disabled. In recognition of his outstanding dedication to the people of New York State, Senator Laval has been repeatedly named Man of the Year and Legislator of the Year by diverse groups of local and statewide organizations. He was also presented the medallion of the university from the State University of New York at Albany and University Medal from Stony Brook University in tribute to his work in higher education. Both awards are the highest honor accorded by the universities. Extremely proud of his Italian heritage, Senator Laval was privileged to receive the honorary title Cavalier ooh, Al Merito della Repubblica Italiana from the Italian government for his work in education and promotion of cultural exchange. Born in Brooklyn, Senator Laval graduated from Hempstead High School on Long Island, earned his undergraduate degree at Adelphi, a degree in education from SUNY New Paltz, and a JD degree from Toro College. Uh, Senator Laval has completed extensive graduate study in government and international relations at New York University, received an honorary doctor of civil law degree from Dowling. In addition to his standing committee assignments, Senator Laval is chairman of the Senate Minority Conference. He is the father of two grown children, the proud grandfather of four grandchildren. And as I said, he resides in Port Jefferson with his wife, Penny. And he, after many, many years and much public service, is retiring from his position in the Senate at the end of this calendar year. So we are so happy to have you here to kick off our um, fifth year with such a distinguished guest. And we talked a little bit um, beforehand about what kinds of things that, because you have a lot, of, a lot of years, what kinds of things would be interesting to this group so I'm going to ask you some of those. Um, I'm going to ask you some of those questions now, right? So, after 44 years, one question is: What motivated you to get into politics? It's um, first of all, uh, let me thank you, and Bill, and others who might be listening for your help and support over the many years in our common focus, education. How do we better it? 
how do we make sure it, it just gets better for the young people of our state? Um, my mother was a driving force in uh, my getting interested in politics. She, my mom was a house on fire who was involved in the community on the library board, on the PTA council, et cetera, et cetera. And um, she knew I had some interest and she made sure that uh, she did everything that she could to uh, make sure that my dreams became reality. As a matter of fact, um, there was a fellow who came to our house and he told my mom, my mom was uh, boastful about my son someday will amount to something. And my mother said, well, that's okay, but uh, we don't want to burst his bubble. And uh, I think that story just inspired me to work harder and try to stay focused on uh, doing things. But I'll tell you um, the, the most important thing is working with other people who have a common interest and getting along with them to have results. Have results. Thank you for that. I do. Thank you very much for that answer. I just want to take a minute also, I failed to recognize somebody else we have on our panel. So for those of you who don't know, um, elected officials have aides to help them do their job because they need to know everything about everything. And although they're really good, most of them are not able to know everything about everything. So they have aides to help them um, understand more deeply certain situations. So Senator Laval's education aide um, is here with him on the panel, Lori Griffiths. She's worked with him for the last 14 or 15 years um, and really helped him to understand issues related to certainly public education, K-12 public education. So welcome also, um, Lori, to the panel. Thanks, Joel. Um, so, You've been doing this for a long time. There's been a lot of people who have given you awards and, and um, affirmation for your work. But what would you say are one or two things that you are most proud of from your work in the Senate? Well, certainly uh, uh, real property tax relief, something that I focused on and created the STAR program, very, very important. And the other is um, I've always um, not been a supporter of uh, testing. And so uh, I passed, I think it was 79, the truth and testing law that allowed students to see the question, their answer, and the correct answer. And I did that because I wanted students to be able to look at the test and see what went wrong. Why did they not get the score that they thought they might uh, get? And uh, being an educator, we learn by looking at those tests. So it was partly an educational experience for the test taker. Uh, I wanted to, to reduce anxiety uh, in the test, um, in taking the test and uh, let the student go in and do the best job they can do because we know that a lot are uptight, fearful of the test. And so we wanted to prepare them in the best way that we could. Thank you for that. I'm sure there are students who 
are still appreciating that effort on your part. Um, so 44 years working in Albany, what do you find to be the most frustrating part of the job? Well, when I started, um, there was much greater respect for one another and for the institution. Uh, you could, as someone once said, a person's handshake was their bond. And that has changed. And I think in society in general, we don't have the same kind of trust that we once had, and we certainly don't have the same respect. Yeah. Yes, I think definitely in society in general, and it, it plays out um, really in all parts of it, even the, you know, even with the people who are creating the laws that we live by. Um, I do have to say one of the comments in the chat, and it actually happens to be one of our administrators who works in our, um, or with the data in our warehouse, she said, thank you for your work on truth and testing because that information is very useful, certainly yeah. to the educators and to the students to know, you know, so that they can learn from uh, the examinations that they take. So thank you for that. Um, so, in your years, what would you say has been your biggest disappointment? The biggest disappointment? Well, I'm a very um, up person. And uh, uh, certainly, um, when I went from the majority to the minority, that was troublesome. But I adapted quickly and within the, those constraints, I tried to do the best job that I could because it's not me, it's the people that I represent. And I uh, have always treated that very, very seriously. I'm where I am because people put me there. They had certain expectations and so, uh, that, that has always been something that I've wanted to stay connected with. But um, as you know, we don't have the kind of respect that we once had, and we certainly don't have the same kind of trust that we once had. And well, interesting story, someone came up to me one day, and we had made they had asked me if I was going to vote for their uh, bill. And I looked it over and I said, yes, you have my support. Shortly thereafter, the person comes up with a piece of paper and he said, will you sign this paper that you're going to support my bill? And I looked at the person and I said, you have just insulted me. No. I will not sign your paper. My word is my bond. Yeah, one of the things, um, just for anybody who's new to this committee, one of the things that we've learned in the field of politics, um, it is much easier to get your legislation passed when you are in the majority. Um, and although there is a lot of collaboration on both sides of the aisle, um, and when it comes to getting bills passed, that that's important. And for many, many years, Republicans were the majority in the Senate. Um, and it, it's much easier to make sure that your work and your thoughts and your legislation is, is moving things forward when that's the case. And it's, it's more difficult to do that when you're in the minority. Um, you know, yeah. Go ahead. Julie, uh, one, one of the things is that um, you need to, um, create relationships so that uh, you're having conversations with people, not once in a while, but continuously so that you, you and the other person are bonding and getting on the same page. 
So, um, yeah, I, uh, I like to think I have good relationships with people, but I work at it. I work at it. It's very, very important. Yeah. Also, you introduced Lori Griffiths, and having a great staff is part of the formula, the equation, in getting things done. And I would tell you that my staff uh, follows my lead in terms of getting along with people, seeking out their, where they are on issues, and hopefully stay connected, staying connected. Yeah, it definitely. And I will have to say this, your office and your staff and you saying you're gonna be where you're going to be and your willingness to have an open door and be out and about um, is definitely something that you're known for. So just know that that's appreciated. Thank you. I know Thank it's, it's hard to be everywhere, but you certainly um, did your best to be to many, many different places. Um, so what advice would you have for the people on the committee that you have learned from your 44 years of public service? Well, number one is decide what your goals are. Make sure every member on the committee understands what the goals are and what you're gonna do as a strategy to accomplish those goals. And then you need to work at it. And uh, uh, I like things in a linear way, but as you well know, uh, they're not. And that becomes a frustration. So you can't let the frustration get in your way of accomplishing those goals. And you need to revisit the goals uh, periodically to make sure that things haven't changed. Uh, look at the period of time we're going through. Who would have thought that uh, we're basically, basically isolated from one another? We're communicating via Zoom or other methodologies, but we don't uh, do it together. Yesterday I went out to lunch with someone and you don't shake hands, you do elbows. So how the world has, um, has changed. But um, the most important thing is that you have to change with it. Mm -hmm. You have to change, it's not static. You know, you have to learn how to change and weave and bob and um, so, um, there is no easy way to get from A to Z. No, no, but certainly being flexible and paying attention to how the world is changing and, you know, knowing how to change with it, those great pieces of advice. Um, so I, I do have to, so for those people on the committee who don't know what the first senatorial district is, it is both forks of Long Island. Um, and as far west as on the north side of Port Jeff, is that how far west you go? Yes, the village and, of Port Jeff. And on the and south side to San Mauritius, to where? Mastic Beach. Oh, to Mastic Beach. Mastic. So, Mastic. Mastic. So that yeah. is a large geographic it area. Yeah. It is. 60% the district is in the town of Brookhaven. Okay. And I was, I will say that the school districts in that area are very, um, very connected to Senator Lavelle. He knows his districts. He's out and about in his districts. Um, he knows when new leadership happens in his districts and he makes it a point to get to know the new superintendents. Yeah. Um, you know, which is, I don't necessarily see that from every political leader. 
So that has been appreciated by the folks who are out in the field. So thank you for that. Um, so for folks who are, um, this is a new format for us. So we're doing a webinar Zoom. Um, and the reason, the way we do that is so that we don't have 34 little postage stamp size photos, but so you can actually see the Senator when he's answering. But the way you would communicate, or if you happen to have a follow-up question, you can put it either in the chat or in the Q&A box, and I will read your questions to the Senator. Um, I know we have some Eastern Suffolk BOCES board members on. We have Ann Mackesy on from Sac Harbor, Brian Mealy from Metatuck, Kathy Romano from Islip, um, Fred Langstaff on from Sayville. Fred is also the president of New York State School Boards this year. Uh, we have a graduate, uh, Joe Bias. Good to see you on. Joe Joe Bias has been coming to the, came to this meeting when he was a junior and senior in high school. And now I think this is his second year out from school and still coming to, um, so coming to the legislative committee meeting, one of the things that Mr. Miller is um, committed to is helping young people in particular understand that they absolutely can influence this world by understanding the power of their vote and by understanding the issues. And um, this is one of the ways that we as an Eastern Suffolk BOCES help students and our, our pretty unusual community um, to do that. Brian Mealy typed in, thank you, Senator Laval, for your work. So that comes to you from the Mattituck region. Ryan is, I think, probably starting his third year on our board. So we're really happy. He's, he's, um, he was on the Mattituck board, um, and now he's on the Eastern Suffolk BOCES board. Oh, I see Matthew Clarine, who is a board member in Islip. No, oh, I should probably stop doing that because I'm going to miss people. But I happen to know Matthew is on the Islip board. Um, so, uh, let's see, another question. Ah, Mr. Langstaff, thank you for all you have done for Eastern Suffolk BOCES and the students across the state. He wishes you well in your retirement. Um, so what would you say with all of those, um, awards and um, recognitions that you have had, is any one of them more meaningful to you than another? Well, they all, they all have their own uh, special identity and special place. Uh, so I'm lucky that um, one is not more important than the other. Mm. Uh, the one thing I wanted to say is hopefully as I move on and I, I would hope go over to the university, I want to study millennials. <laughs> millennials. So, Good um, that. <laughs> right. That's why it needs study and, uh, hopefully we'll come, um, in a better place to understand them. They are the biggest category, you know, um, of, of any of the uh, groups. So, uh, and it's important that we understand, get their input, so that we're not doing things to brush them off but make sure that they're involved. They are the biggest, the largest group, age group. Mm. So, um, yeah, they're very, very interesting. Very yeah. interesting group. Uh, Kathy Romano says, thank you, Senator, for sharing your insights with us. Um, oh, so Brian Mealy also says, in Mattituck, we call you Papa Ken, because you represented us like family. Thank you for speaking with our students last year with Assemblyman Palumbo. How can we secure the mental health resources that you and others fought so hard to secure 
and now are in jeopardy. I know that one of the things you did work for is to get money for the North Fork uh, Mental Health Initiative. Yeah. Uh, you did that with um, Ann Smith, who was at one point the superintendent in Mattatuck. Do you yes, have any she advice for yeah. them? So um, I think that um, it's been alive for a while. Great job is being done. And if you don't get rid of something that is doing a good job, because no one could withstand the political pressure of trying to get rid of something that is working and helping people. Thank you for that. So um, the next one is from Mrs. Romano. A tough question. So in light of the delay of federal aid, right? We're all waiting and asking yeah. for the federal government to step in and help out this state that's in rough shape. Um, and because of your history of working on New York state budgets, what do you see for the near future of education and budgeting? You know, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be difficult, but education for majority of people is a number one priority. So people will be looking very carefully as to what is happening, what's going on. So um, I would say, uh, you know, I'm still going to be in office until December 31st. And as long as I'm there, uh, I will have a voice and speak out on behalf of the, the districts and the students. But uh, education is number one priority. Yeah, thank you for that. And thank you for your ongoing support. Um, so anybody else who has questions for the Senator, feel free to type them into the Q&A box. Um, so I have to share a story and actually express my gratitude. So I'm going to share, it's a little bit embarrassing, but I'm going to share my first interaction with the Senator. So I was brand new to this position and part of my job um, and BOCES board supports me in doing this and I did it in consultation with, I do it really in consultation with Suffolk County school superintendents is to do legislative work. Um, and one of the first things that I did is I sent out a critical memo about what the Senate had chosen, how the Senate had chosen to you know, put together their one house bill. And I sent it to both the Senate and the assembly. And Senator Laval had the character to call me on the phone and say to me, I just want, I, he said, I'm gonna assume that's a rookie mistake. And I'm just letting you know early in your career that that's not how we do things. And I want to publicly, I think that was probably the beginning of a good relationship for us, but I wanna thank you for really having that kind of character to pick up the phone and call me and let me know that. You have yeah. to work with people. You have to communicate with people. Yeah. And have honest communication. Yeah. And I will say, I don't know as I necessarily see that same kind of character in all of the political leaders that I interact with. So you- I'm surprised um, I didn't say I have a, a line. If you're asking for favors, don't tell Santa Claus he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a question from one of our new teachers. Um, 
Chef Jill Hamill, she teaches, she's a chef, teaches um, culinary to our special career ed kids. She says, do you have any advice for new teachers? Hmm. You know, um, the first thing is they have to make sure that this is a love. This is something they want to do. I remember uh, when I was 21 years old and went to the middle country school district and uh, I walked into the classroom and I took a deep breath and I said, you belong here. This is, this is your place. And uh, I remember my first year when the school buses were leaving and I was losing my students, I literally cried. Mm -hmm. So love what you do and put yourself into it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Uh, as my dad always said, God put erasers on pencils for a reason. So, um, yeah. Good, good advice. Um, and another question. Um, actually, we asked a little early, but I ask again, what are you most proud of in your career? I know that we asked earlier and you said, um, you said the star. Um, um, I don't remember what else you said. Oh, there's the star program, the Pine Barrens. Yeah, you didn't say it now. <laughs> the things that I've done um, for students with special needs. Mm -hmm. And um, that always has had a very special place in my heart. And um, yeah, yeah, that's it. Good. Um, I also have to make one more. So we also have a board member, Linda Goldsmith. Linda actually represents Oyster Ponds, and she's also on the Eastern Suffolk BOCES board. Linda's a longtime board member, so welcome, Linda, to the call. Um, so between now and December, I, uh, earlier on in the call, when I don't think, I don't know if we had officially started, um, the Senator indicated that everything that's going on at this point is via Zoom. So does that mean you don't have to travel up to Albany at all and you do it all from local or do you sometimes go up there? My home. You go from your home. So you can actually, is there any, um, there's no actual session work going on at the time, or is there? What is there, 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 yes, there are. There, there's only a certain number of people that can go into the chamber at one time. Oh, okay. Most people, now that we have Zoom, would rather uh, do it from their office in the Senate uh, or from home. And... Um, as you well know, um, we've all become uh, Zoom people, and it's been the new way of life, right? <laughs> Look at what we're doing tonight. How wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I bet you miss your in-person um, interactions. I'm a people person, I, I do. Yeah. I uh, miss certain colleagues that uh, I've formed close relationships with. And um, I think that's one of the things that um, I think I'll miss some of the friends that I've built relationships with and uh, you know, we'll continue uh, communicating, but um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, if you're a people person, you have to have people that you're involved with. Yeah, you're right. 
And Zoom, although it's good, it's not as good as, as being able to chat with somebody. Right. So we have um, another question, two actually, but I mean, the first one is from Matthew Clarine, who is on the Islip School Board. Um, how can school board members become better advocates for our students and school community when we meet with legislators in Albany and in your local offices? Well, as I had said before, set your goals. What do you want to achieve? What questions do you want to ask? And then do some research so that you can carry on a conversation with the legislator rather than just saying, uh huh, uh huh, uh, no. You know, make sure you're conversant with the subject matter that you want to discuss. Um, legislators, um, Appreciate school board members coming up, taking time. Um, there are times when the journey is difficult, ice, snow, wind, you know. So, uh, but legislators, 99 and 9 tenths percent, appreciate the time you've taken. They want to hear from you. They want to know what is going on in your district so that we can make intelligent responses when we vote. So um, uh, most, as I said, 99, 9 tenths want to hear from you, what you're about, what your issues are, so that um, the legislator can make an intelligent decision when they vote. <coughs> Good. Thank you. Um, so we have another question from Mrs. Romano. So with the potential for so many changes in Long Island seats in the Senate, uh, for example, uh, you and both you and Senator Flanagan uh, retiring. Senator Flanagan already retired, I believe, right? Is he done? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. um, what is the future of influence on policy and budget for the Long Island delegations? And what can we non-politicians do to help keep our priorities, Long Island priorities, on the agenda? Well, when I started, we were the Long Island Nine. We were all Republican senators. That has changed with the number of Republican senators. What doesn't change is that the representation, we have to represent you, whether we're a Republican, or a Democrat, whether we come from Northport or Port Jefferson. And um, so I, I would say you can shape uh, the the feeling, uh, what, what you want the Long, uh, the Long Island delegation to do in representing you. Um, not everyone is on the education committee. Uh, not everyone is heavily involved in education in their district. So you can shape, you can shape what's going to be happening. So this is another good question. What is the best time to meet with legislators? Is it in their home office, with the staff, or in Albany? You and know, a particular time of the year that's better for meetings for you? I think um, off session times, it's good down in the district. So uh, makes you the question. There also, every legislator has one or two 
um, board members or teachers who interact. them on a regular basis. So what's going to happen to that with the COVID, but um, could always do that, right, Bill? Uh, via I don't know, did you hear what I said? Um, it works. Some of it, some of it broke up a little bit. I think you said um, off um, when not in session, it's good to meet in home offices. And I think you said right. something about everybody's got a couple of um, staff that all also can be met with. Um, sure. So let me ask: Is it helpful for people to drive to Albany? I mean, when people drive up to Albany to meet with you, does that have a different impact? Not really. I like the home office, face-to-face, -face, not being rushed. You know, when you're in Albany, everything is happening and you have just a, a shorter period of time when the meeting with people. Yeah. And I'm, I'm lucky because I have staff like Lori uh, just so everyone knows, Lori was a school board member in the Shoreham Wading River School District. So she was on the line of fire uh, for many, many years and was president of the school board. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm fortunate because it's helpful to me. Joanne uh, Ingham is my chief of staff. She's heavily involved. So I'm lucky. I've got good staff who are involved. And of course, uh, Brian Murphy in Albany, who has been with me forever. And when people come up to Albany, Brian meets many times with, the, uh, with them. With the people coming up. Yeah. So I have somebody who has shared a memory of you. So I'm gonna read it. This is from Maria Delaquilla, who actually happens to work um, in my office in Eastern Suffolk Boses, but she says, I will share a memory I have of my first encounter with Senator Laval when I was a senior in Miller Place High School in 1980. As a new writer on the school newspaper, Senator Laval took the time to come to the school and allow me to interview him regarding the Iran hostage crisis. He spent quite a bit of time sharing his insights and thoughts regarding the situation. I was very appreciative of his time and kindness, and I have followed his career ever since. So all of the, so I think when somebody asks, what advice would you have for whether it be new teachers or for students, I can really just being a person of your word and being sincere about spending time with people and treating people like people, just modeling that for your entire career is, is a great answer to how, you know, advice you have for people. Um, That's common sense. Well, common sense. <laughs> someone, someone drives... You don't give them short shrift. Yeah. You give them as much time as you possibly can. You don't do a four hour trip up to Albany, many times driving in adverse weather and, uh, and they have something important to say to you. Yeah. Um, so we have another question from Lisa Mangiello. Lisa is one of our teachers and also in, very active in the, um, on the legislative committee and very active in bringing students to the legislative committee. She also has brought students up to Albany with us when we've come up um, to advocate. 
But so this is her question. She, first of all, she says, thank you for your service. What is the best way for young adults to get involved with social distancing measures in place? I think she probably means involved with politics. What is the best way to do that now that it's you know not as easy? You can't come to people's offices. You can't necessarily go to Albany. What is a good way for them to get involved? Well, hopefully this is not going to last forever. Um, and we have the telephone and someone calling up their legislator and saying, you know, I want to get involved. Uh, to interact with you and the legislator say, sure, you know, give me a call on uh, Fridays uh, once a month or twice a month. Um, so I, I think um, once again, communication is important and you need to uh, interact with the legislature or legislators. So I have to ask, so I'm assuming because you're working from home, you are not um, meeting with people face to face. Do you, set right. up, do you set up Zoom meetings that people wanted to, like if, obviously you're wrapping up your career, but would you be setting up Zoom meetings if people wanted to meet with you or are they phone calls? First of all, I am the people's senator until the 31st day of December. And I will go right to that point. And anyone who needs my attention will get my attention and we will interact. People uh, will not get short shrifted. We appreciate that. Um, other questions that anybody has? 44 years of government service, lots of experience, lots of knowledge. Any other questions for the Senator? Yes, I have a question for the Senator, Julie. Senator, I'd like to thank you for your, your continued service up until the end of the year. And also for all you have done for Eastern Suffolk BOCES with the STEM program. And also I've come from Longwood School District and back in the 90s, you gave us the money and we held a zero tax increase for the, for the money that you have given us. And we appreciate that. And that was done to Dr. Swenson at that point in time. Yeah. And that, that led us to where we are today. So I'd like to thank you again for all you have done for the school districts and also for my Legislative Committee at Longwood for always being there for the students. You were always for the students. Yeah. Thank you for that. Without students, you don't have an education system. <laughs> That's so true. Thank you. Um, so do you have any last words of wisdom for us as we're getting close to wrapping up our hour? These are going to be very, very times. No one has uh, um, any money. Everyone has deficits. So um, we have to remember what I just said. It's all about the students, how we provide education. We're going to have to be very creative, very creative. And um, we're going to see how the legislature and the governor uh, react in the first instance here. But um, all I can tell you is um, we need to stay close. And, uh, collective wisdom always wins. So uh, down and uh, right to the end. Yes, appreciate that. So if we were all together in the same room, we would get the students up and give you the opportunity to have your picture taken with the students and we would give you this 
plaque, which I will get to you. It is our thank you for speaking at our legislative committee. So I will get it to you somehow in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I think that's probably lots of speakers' favorite part. Nice. Thank you. Able to have thank a you. picture taken. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your uh, many, many years, your wisdom, your character, um, and the impact you've had on, on many lives in that time. Um, Mr. Miller, I don't, do you have other things you want to talk about to wrap up this um, meeting? But just the closing remarks? Yes. I'd just like to thank everyone for their attendance tonight. Uh, this was the first uh, meeting that we have had of the school year. Our next meeting is Thursday, October 8th at 7 p.m. Uh, we're lining up the guest speaker for that. And in everybody's memory, tomorrow, tomorrow is the 19th anniversary of 9-11. Can everyone please have a, in your course of the day, have a moment of silence for those that have given up their lives for 9-11. And with that, Thank you again and looking forward to our next meeting, October 8th. Thank you. Thank you again, Senator, for taking time to join us this evening. Um, Thanks for the opportunity, Julie. Yes, thank you. You did a great job. Thank you also, Lori, for um, helping us to get ready for this meeting. And thank you, uh, Bill. Thank you, Lori. You're uh, welcome, guys. Our, our tech support to make this meeting happen. Paul, thank you. We don't see Paul here. And Kathy. Yeah. So lots of thank yous in the chat. Thank you, Senator, for all your efforts on our behalf over these years. Thanks for all of your support for our children. Lots of thanks. Uh, Senator, I'm glad that we were able to meet you in person in February for Advocacy Day. Zoom is great, but you really inspire CTE students that met with you that day. Thank you for all that you have done and still do. Again, thank you. All right, you're you're going to make me cry, Jewel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So. All right, everybody. Have a good evening. Stay safe. And we'll see you on October 8th. We'll be virtual in October as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Lori. I'll be in touch with you to figure out um, how to get this certificate. Okay. I'm around. All right. All thank right, Joel. Thank, thank you. Thank okay. You, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. No problem, guys. All righty. Bye, Julie. Thanks. Yeah. Good thank night you. now. Bye-bye. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, thank you, Bill.